Hey there, it's Dr. K back for part two of a four part video series on activity on node diagrams and critical path analysis. In our last video, we completed step one, which involved using our project network table to construct an activity on node or AON diagram to represent the flow of activities. In this video, we'll move on to step two, which is completing the forward pass. Let's go. The forward pass is a series of calculations moving from the start to end node of the network diagram that allows us to determine the earliest times or activities can start and end. These data points are known as our early times, and there are two of them, the early start or ES and the early finish or EF. As the name suggests, the early start of an activity is the earliest possible time in the project timeline that the activity may begin, while the early finish is the earliest possible time in the project timeline that the activity may be completed. Since activities must wait on their predecessor activities to end before they can start, the early start time of an activity is equal to the time at which all its predecessor activities are complete. Let's take a second to think about that. Now, the early finish of an activity is equal to the early start time of the activity plus the duration of that activity. When labeling our activities with the forward pass information, we make notes as follows. Early start goes here and early finish goes here. Okay, that was a lot to digest, but now we're finally ready to do our forward pass. Let's go. It is best practice to assign the start of the project a time of zero. It doesn't matter if we are measuring in days, months, or years. Since our starting activities do not have to wait on any predecessors to start, their early start time is hence zero. So let's fill that in for both A and B. Good. Now let's calculate their early finish using our formula EF is equal to ES plus duration. A has a duration of three, so its early finish is zero plus three equals three. B has a duration of two, so its early finish is zero plus two is equal to two. Now what's the early start of C? C has more than one predecessor, and we know that the early start of activity is equal to the time when all its predecessors are complete. We see that B is complete at time period two. However, A does not end until time period three. Therefore, C has to wait on A to end. So its early start time is three. C's early finish is equal to three plus two equals five. D has only one predecessor, which is A, so it can start as soon as A is finished at time period 3. Therefore, the early start for D is 3. The early finish for D is 3 plus 5 equals 8. E has only one predecessor as well, which is B. Therefore, it can start as soon as B is finished at time period 2. So the early start for E is two. E's early finish is equal to two plus three equal five. Now F has more than one predecessor and we know that the early start of activity is equal to the time when all its predecessors are complete. We see that C is complete at time period five However, D does not end until time period 8. Therefore, F has to wait on D to end, 
making its early start time 8. X early finish is equal to 8 plus 2 equals 10. Since there are no more activities, the project duration is set at the early finish of the final activity, in this case 10 days. This is the project length that will be included in our project plan and used to manage our project schedule. And there you have it, our forward pass is complete. In part three of this video series, we'll move on to step three of our critical path analysis, which is completing the backward pass. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to keep up with more great project management content. What project management topic would you like me to cover next? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, this is Dr. K saying, keep calm and project on.